So our 7.30 guest, 8.30 for those who are on the East Coast, she is on. So we're going to go ahead and bring her on a little early since the first guest um, wasn't with us tonight. And Curtis, congratulations again on winning your copy of the book, to the 272. So our, our next guest is Elena Neely, and she is a children's author. She is going, and she has on her t-shirt, her Black Authors Matter t-shirt, and <laughs> she is going to be at the National Black Book Festival. So we'll get to meet her in person there. But um, for now, she's on Black Authors Matter TV to tell us about her book. And I think she has more than one. So welcome to Black Authors Matter TV. Thank you, Ms. Gwen, and good evening, Dr. Rhonda. Good evening to you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. So uh, tell us about what motivated you to start writing the books that you've written. Well, thank you so much. I can't even tell you how long it was that I dreamed of being a children's book author, not an author, but a okay. children's book author, because not only did I find a love of reading, but more than anything, I had a daughter and she loved books and we loved books together. And we spent a lot of time as a family involved in books. So there was always this desire to find certain books that I hadn't seen before. And so I said, I want to write children's books. So for a long time, I did. And finally, after I got my daughter off to college, I had an opportunity to start writing. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you how old was your daughter now? <laughs> yeah. She's and I can 23 now. Okay. But started writing as soon as she left. <laughs> okay. I, I can relate because when they're young, you really, it's hard to do a lot of things. I, I tell people all the time that um, I started writing um, regularly when my daughter was still very young, but I could not write until she was in bed. So often by the time I got her into bed, got myself together, it would be after nine o'clock before I could write. And then I would try to write until maybe 11 or 12. And then I had to be right back up to go to work the next morning. So um, I, I feel your pain. And it might have been a good thing that you waited until she was older. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's been a joy to get a chance to get that part of me out. Yes, that's great. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you, I thought your daughter was still young. Because I hear from a lot of parents now with young children that their children are on devices so much that they were having challenges getting them to read books. Um, and so I was going to ask you how you address that, but she's 23. So I can't. She is but still a digital native though. Okay. <laughs> still okay. a digital native, but I had a belief in reading and that is kind of the concept behind the business of Blessings for Living. And it's not just the books and what they entail. It's the time parents have reading the kids' books. So my books are really not just for kids, but it's really for parents to read the kids and to be able to um impart to them things that are going to help their lives, but they're entertaining at the same time. So I would love to tell you that um, there is, it was written to try to get kids out of the, the, the actual phone because my daughter did get into the phone and she spent a lot of time on the phone. However, we made time for reading time. Okay. That's wonderful um, that, you know, um, when when you when you put that into a child when they're still young, even if they do start doing the phones and the video games or whatever else, they're always going to come back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, they, they need to be exposed to books early on. And it can be a digital book, but a physical book. It, the tactile experience is different. Nothing like it. Nothing, nothing like turning the, the pages, turning the pages, and and talking about it and sharing it. Um, 
it's not as easy to do. And and parents that you know they they'll say, oh, I can't get them off of there, whatever. But okay, you pay for the device. That's one thing. <laughs> you is you pay. They wouldn't have it if you didn't pay for it. And so you have to make that. You can't be scared of your children. You know you can't. I will, I will say that there is a way to meet them in the middle. Um, what I found when my daughter was younger and she was into YouTube and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, she also told me, and I found out that kids are still using it. She told me about um, this um, thing called Wattpad. So they were, oh. reading, but they were reading in smaller chunks online. So people were still able to write and um, they were able to read, but they were still getting that digital fix. So there is a way to meet kids halfway um, because it's right now in this day and age, it's really hard to tear people away from social media, even as adults. It's yeah. hard to pull us away from social media because if I say, I don't want to do social media for the week, I'm like, shoot, I still got to promote my business, still got to promote my book. Right. I still right. I still have to get in touch with certain people. So, you know, it's hard, it's harder to pull away from it. So if you're able to meet them halfway and use something like a Wattpad or um, Kindle Vela is another one, then um, it, it's, it's still giving them the opportunity to read. Absolutely. And I'll just add that we love taking trips to the library to get books. We yeah. have a little a bag and it was like it was time to go and she could pick five books and she mm-hmm. had a good time finding those five books and we uh turn it over uh at least every two weeks we go back but she enjoyed that time again that we spent together but also that she dwelled in it and I believe it makes a difference in the kids overall life I agree oh I agree. for sure definitely because if they grow up exposed to books and, and and seeing seeing you reading or the parent reading, then it's gonna always be there. Mm-hmm. What, I saw my mother read. My mother was always reading. She would at the end of the day after dinner and when she had her wind down time at the end of the day, she was always reading a book. The TV might be on, but she was focused on. It was like background noise. And that's what I do. The TV might be on, but if I if I'm into a book, I don't even hear what's going on on the TV. I can totally block it out. Like you said, it just becomes white noise just to have right. in the room, but right. you're paying attention to it. <laughs> right. And one thing I really on my cruise that I went on for ten days, where you really you you don't you can't do a lot of stuff online. We had the package, <laughs> but you know it's still kind of iffy. <laughs> but I read three three, 400 page books wow. while I was on that cruise. Beautiful. Between going and coming back, I, I, I read three and they were all, they, all of them were good too. So that was helpful. Cause I didn't, I didn't take my laptop to try to write while I was on there. Cause I, I didn't, that wasn't going to be a good environment for me to try to finish up my book. I still had about when I got back. So I got back on the 31st of August. And I still had about 10,000 words to write. And I was able to do that. And, um, and I had my, my copy editor, I was giving her pieces. I gave her the bulk of it before I left what I had done, which was 8%. And then, but she worked with me on doing, you know, do, finishing and doing it in piecemeal. So anyway, um, it's a good idea to just make sure your children have a love for reading because Amen. the the what's on social media, okay, it's entertaining, but it's not, it's kind of mind numbing. You know, it doesn't stimulate, it, it really is like a fix almost. Yeah. Especially it, these yeah. short reels, the TikTok and all of that. It's really like a fix. And you can really, I you can literally go on there. And I know I'm not the only one that's, I'm not on there much. But if I click a video and then they'll start, uh, the algorithm will show you other videos that are similar. And you can literally sit there for hours if 
I don't yeah. because I don't have the hours and I don't want to, yes. but it's very addictive. It is very distracting. And yeah. you think yeah. about the biggest threat to the world right now is our distraction. And we have to stay focused. If you talk to some of the most successful people in the world, they'll tell you they have a day and they have a times that they do certain things and they, most of them won't get just, you know, caught up in the social media. And it's not that it's bad. It's just that it is a distraction. And so I like books because it takes you somewhere and like your books, you know, they take you somewhere else and they engage you. And that's the goal of any writer is to engage their audience. So um, that's the book that I, I highlighted for this particular conversation. Uh, it's about my daughter, a girl named Amaya, who reached inside herself and found her strength. Now, okay, so is that the book beside you there? Yes. And, um, yes, that's it. That's okay. <laughs> Do you, um, I love um, books like this where um, you can take topics and help the help the kids to you know inspire the kids. How, but how how do you and I love asking authors this question. How do you take such a subject and put it in terms to where a child can not only understand it but be inspired by it? You know, you really hit something there because I constantly fight with it. How do I? tell a very sophisticated concept and make it plain for right, a child. Right. And um, my company is called Blessings for Living. Uh, and that is a, it's a publishing company, but primarily it's about blessing the word. When you share life's greatest lessons, you become a blessing. And so how do you sell, how do you share these more sophisticated topics uh, about love, about being a friend, about being brave in such a way. Well, I learned to do rhymes quite a bit, but you just learn to understand what audience you're reading to and who else might be reading a book like the parent to the child. And then you communicate it. Every sophisticated concept can be narrowed down to some basic conversations and in the case of Amaya they were her real life situations they were real life situations Amaya dad's passed away when she was nine years old oh now is that your daughter's name Amaya okay so you literally named the book after your daughter yeah a girl so named you didn't Amaya. have like a concept of a person similar to your daughter yeah you took her and Situation. And then you just figure out what she went through, you know, and it was in the book that I explained that it was one day after a year after her dad died. She didn't ever want to talk about it. But after a year, we were at his grave site and we were, you know, doing what we normally do, shine up his stone. And she said, Mommy, I just wish I had known. Mm. You know? And so it's an opportunity at that moment. She could have let this whole thing tear her apart, tear her insides out. But in that moment, she spoke up and said, I just wish I had known. And I just told her, I didn't know either. Uh, how, how could I know? Only God knew uh, when his time was going to be up. But he never left us. And you could literally see her take a deep breath. And she reached inside herself and found strength to keep mm -hmm. going. And I never could communicate what that was when I'd see it happen in her. But there are definite times where she took a gulp and it's like she reached inside herself and found her strength. So I thought of about six or seven of these moments in her life and I just communicated them out. Okay. With the help of a beautiful illustrator we were able to get this book done and everybody who has read it has been encouraged. And in fact, I have a friend who has um, used it in a book. She does a book, a summer book program uh, for young girls. And she has actually shared that book and they study through the book and they go through the situations. And I am certain that kids will find themselves in the book, the different things that happen. 
How did you find that the um, the young the young um, kids who were able to experience the book through this um, program? How did you find that the um, that you know that they responded to the story? Uh, because probably empathy. One of the situations uh, where Amaya found a, a situation was when she grew up in a suburb neighborhood. And there was a lot of different people that didn't look like her. Right. And their hair was different and who they were were different. And every time I get into a situation where I was like, how am I going to handle this situation? I pause and I pray, Lord, help me, give me the words. And she had come home. She said, why am I hair? Why is my hair like other people? And I know what she was getting at. You know, why is she different? And. I said, Lord, help me. And the thing that came to me is I said, Yamaya, you know, just imagine a field of white flowers and there was only one pink one. Which one would you want to be? She quickly said the pink one. <laughs> and I said, honey, you are. <laughs> you are the pink one. <laughs> so there is value of in being yeah. different. There is beauty <laughs> in being different. And you could see her in that moment, take that gulp and say, okay, I'm going to reach inside myself and keep stepping forward with a little pride. But the people who have had that I've had the experience of sharing the book with and seeing their themselves, they recognize moments where they have the same situation and based on their age, I have some, I had a group that was a little bit older and they were facing college. And there's a situation where Amaya had to do some hard things to get herself ready for college. But she literally had that exciting moment when you get accepted to college and you realize all the hard work finally paid off. And so to see somebody else achieve, which is all of us, we see other people achieve, we are inspired to take those steps to get there as well. So where you, is she in school? Well, she has um, since I mean, graduated, she but school? she did get into Cornell University Wonderful. in Ithaca, okay. New York. Okay. And she, at that point, um, started to go into finance. And to her credit and hard work, she um, landed a job right out of college with a big private uh, equity firm in New York. She now lives in New York. Right. And that's the, the beauty of the cover is, is all about uh, New York and California. You can't really tell, but it's a uh, New York. Put it California. closer to you. Okay. Um, no, it's the, it's the bright. Is it the light? Is it the yeah, light? Maybe the light. It? Okay. It may be the light, but back okay. there you can see there's remnants of a palm tree, but the Statue of Liberty. You okay. Know I mean? So it gives you the feel of both California and uh, New York because that's where her journey um, and all those moments happen is through one side of the coast to the other side of the coast. So when you, you know, we're talking about your cover, I was thinking to myself, the cover design is always exciting. <laughs> you get people to pick up the book. It has to be a trend. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but you were, you like, you already have a title, you know, you're kind of, and then you get the book made, you know what I'm saying? It's just yeah, fun. It's yeah, a fun part I, of being. I, I don't know where Exodus from Treachery came from, but, but because I didn't have a total story, I just had like a remnant. But I wanted to use the word exodus and then so I had to figure out a way to use that. And for book three, <laughs> I, I have a I have a title, but I don't have a story at all. So uh I don't know if I'm gonna do a book three. I hope to, but it just depends. You know, it's a it's a lot, it's a lot of it's a lot of words. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of words. Cause you have to tell the story and you have to end, it has to make sense, you know, it has to flow. Right. Now you you have the publishing company. So do you publish other people's books? I have. And okay. it's my focus to focus on those that enrich and entertain and uplift others. And so uh, one of the authors I published, uh, she wrote a book about a special needs 
uh, child. And it's a story of a real life young man because she's a teacher in special needs. And she is really all about him wanting to be seen. Yeah. It's called, Hey, will you help me? And it's a story about uh, a little boy who just really wants to achieve just like everyone else. And it really just takes someone to see that desire. And he has a, a, a tight knit family that does that. But it's a great story uh, about this little boy. And um, the illustrator for that book happened to be a relative. So it was a really great coming together of um, a family to actually put this book together. And it's really exciting. Did you use the same illustrator for all three books? Um, in my series, uh, Blessings for Living, I did use a very nice uh, illustrator who, uh, his name is Terry Didham, and he's out of Los Angeles, and I met him through a cousin, my cousin, but let me tell you, this guy brought my vision to life, and that's the beauty, right, yeah. of an illustrator, yeah. is mm -hmm. you give them the reign to do what they do. Mm -hmm. And he did a most amazing job. And I'm, and I'm looking, I'm always looking to use new people because I believe that they too have something to share. And I don't try to give them too much direction. I try to just let them know what I want to see, that the, the point I'm trying to make, the colors I want to see. And then you, I, it's just the greatest thing on earth to let them experience their dream as well. That's true because on from from my new book, what I had in my mind, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have worked. And mm -hmm. he tried to do something similar, but it just it it, it didn't look right. And mm -hmm. then he said, "What what what if I do this?" And mm -hmm. then he did it. I said, "That's perfect." So what he ended up doing, I didn't even have, I didn't even have that idea for it. Um, mm -hmm. He he did it. Now the, for the redo on the Genesis files, I I knew what I wanted for that, but what I had in my mind um, didn't work. And then two, I went and looked at other books in the genre, other book covers. I did. I, I spent some time. I just looked at a whole bunch of different book covers, and I said, you know, most of, most mysteries have one, if they have a person, it's only one person yeah. on the cover, if they have a person. Yeah, but I like the idea of the theme. And yeah. um, the, the three book thing that I did with Blessings for Living, I kept the main title, Blessings for Living, but I gave it a different subtitle. So the first uh -huh. one, Blessings for Living, Planting Seeds of Greatness, Blessings okay. for Living, The Best of Being, and then blessings for living. Always remember and never forget. And uh, it's so what what time. age group is your are your books for? What's the target? Um, I would say I have to say zero because I again believe parents should read to children. But I'd say zero to twelve. Okay. And they can read them and then get something from them because the books grow with the child, believe it or not. It is a series, but even the visuals on the book, they change with the child and you almost see the kids grow up and it's two kids on the book. And the other thing about every book is there's a rainbow because there's always hope in a rainbow. And so, um, but the concepts are 30 of life's greatest lessons packed in this three book series. Um, when you talk about the best of being, it is about uh, being brave, being yourself. The first one is about basic concepts, playing, planting seeds of greatness, thinking time, getting your sleep, doing your best. But by the time you get to always remember and never forget, you're talking about forgiveness is free the power of one, believe in your dreams, those kind of concepts. So they kind of grow up. And so that's why they range from that um, amount of time. And um, honestly, every one of the 30 blessings 
are concepts that have biblical background. Okay. I mean, everything in every one of those concepts. And there is so what happened was <laughs> I decided to create a workbook. So I literally have a workbook that okay. has for uh and it's already in a in a church in California, but oh. every concept has about four or five verses. And then it actually has a thing you could do to reinforce that verse in a Sunday school concept. And then there's a prayer at the end. Okay. And so it's, it's been a blessing to be given the gift to actually write the books. And so a lot of the books that I write are, are, are based on what I believe the Lord gives me to write. A lot of educators have said that having a workbook or some sort of companion activity book or something like that with the books is helpful in them actually bringing it bringing it into the school into the curriculum great great so i'm thinking about something like that myself for yes. you know my some of my children's books um i just hadn't gotten gotten around to it but Yes, but did, now, did you think, think of the did you think of it yourself, or did you have someone ask you about the workbook? No, I just started noticing as I did my regular prayer that oh my god, there's there's something about being brave. Oh my god, there's something about the power of one. You know, every concept, okay. and I said, let me start looking into it, and I did like three different lessons. And it was a direct correlation. So I went straight to my pastor and I said, what about this concept? If I put something like this together, would you test it in your Sunday school program? And of course she loved it. And um, and I say, of course she loved it because who wouldn't want to get this down in their, their youth uh, mm -hmm. heart? And so she agreed to do it. And so as I began to write, I was blessed because of all the scriptures you found. And that's the thing about revisiting the greatest lessons in life, that you can be, you can remember how great they are. And mm -hmm. also a lot of adults didn't get those lessons and they can revisit them as well. Especially those scriptures that, you know, we have to hide in our heart, you know, so that's what I ended up doing. And I just want to, before it gets too late, I just want to thank you, Miss Gwen, because, you know, I'm sure I wasn't the best registrant. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> because I kind of missed the deadline and all that. But I just want to thank you for what you have put together, this opportunity for authors to get together and all of us that you know that really have a hard time getting the word out so I just want to thank you for the opportunity and the space that you have provided oh well you're welcome but you know one of the challenges that we have every year and I'll say I have specifically is that encountering authors who just refuse to read the emails that I sent. <laughs> yeah, because well, I think I, I sent one email to you and I said, never mind, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you are not alone. I want you to know that you are not alone at all, at all. Okay. And I just, I try to give people all the information that they need. And I know sometimes it's a lot, you know, it is, it is a long email. I try to put all of the relevant, important things in one email. So Which it will great. be in one place, you know, so you don't have to look through five different emails to find the important things. You did. So, um, that, but it can be long. And I know with the email, people say, okay, I'll get to it later. And, and you just get busy. Everybody is busy. So, um, and you then they ask me a question that's in there, and I'll normally will say it's in the email that I sent that says, please read carefully. 
Go to the search for please read carefully. It's in there. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, some people have an assignment that works for them and they're able to do it. Mm -hmm. And I that's one of my strengths is beautiful execution and administration and that's also wonderful. marketing. I'm good at marketing as well. Well, I'm looking forward to learning quite a bit myself. There are some people, and, and I have an amazing team. That's what the team that we have for the festival and, and for this show, we have amazing people that work with us. So it, it may seem, I think we make it seem like it's easy because sometimes people will say, well, I want to do something like this in my city or wherever. And how, how do you do it? Well, you know, you start with 25 years of experience and exposure to, to thousands of authors. That's something you build over time. It's not something you can just say, okay, up and do, because mm -hmm. it's, it's just years and years and years and years of work. Mm -hmm. But um, it's something that's needed. It's, it helps so many people. There's so many relationships that are formed and you'll see there's so many people you will meet and and I find it very gratifying that people get together and then after the festival I see they post pictures that they did some other things together mm -hmm. they work together because they met some people who were like-minded with similar that's goals. what I was mentioning earlier and it's all about connections and networking and yeah. um, many of the people that I've met at the conference, I'm still in touch with today. And we don't, we don't just get in touch just to sell each other something. We, we get in right. touch to say, hello, how you doing? Can I, how can I support you? Blah, blah, blah. That's right. wonderful. And collaborate. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of collaborate. Good. So we only have two minutes left. And we want to make sure people know how to get your books. And also, you're going to be in Houston in yeah, yeah. three weeks at the National Black Book Festival. But tell people how they can get your books. And are they in your name or they in your website? And Amazon, yes, wherever my name is Elena Neely and I am on Amazon and I have my own site called Blessings for Living. Now, again, that's B-L-E-S-S-O-N-S because I put the word blessing and lesson together. But uh, on Amazon, all the books are there. The workbook is there and on my site as well. And you can learn more about the uh, author and the illustrator, et cetera. Um, but I would love to share this one thing about the lessons and now in with that. And that is a blessing is a lesson shared. It's mm -hmm. a blessing to share. It's a blessing to care. Always remember and never forget that blessings flow to help you grow. Oh, what a blessing it is. That is beautiful and a great way to end this segment. We did put your link in the chat and um, Tony Bonita already has already ordered your books. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Thank you for sharing your stories and for what you were doing for um, children's authors. Thank you so much for having me. And we'll see you in Houston. Okay. Yeah, we'll see you in three weeks. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Good night.